and with your spirit. Thank you for thank you for tuning in today as we celebrate the 25th Sunday of Ordinary Time, just a few days before the change into the autumn season. So we're now in these final days of summer. We gather around this altar table here, and we thank God for his many blessings. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have given us the consolation of truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd, leading us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace with the people of the will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, we see our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law, upon love of you and of our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts, we may merit to attain eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way and the wicked his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God, who is generous and forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is near to all who call upon Him. The Lord is near to all who call upon Him. Every day will I bless you, and I will praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and highly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. The Lord is near to all who call upon Him. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is good to all and compassionate toward his, all His works. The Lord is near to all who call upon Him. The Lord is just in all His ways and holy in all his works. The Lord is near to all who call upon him, to all who call upon him in truth. The Lord is near to all who call upon him. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, Christ will be magnified in my body whether by life or by death. For to me, life is Christ, and death is gain. If I go on living in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me, and I do not know which I shall choose. I am caught between the two. I long to depart this life and be with Christ, for that is far better. Yes, that I remain in the flesh is more necessary for your benefit. Only conduct yourselves in a way worthy of the gospel of Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks.
Thanks be to God. with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out at dawn to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with them for the usual daily wage, you too go into my vineyard, and I will give you what is just. So they went off. And he went out again around noon, and around three o'clock, and did likewise. Going out about five o'clock, the landowner found others standing around, and said to them, Why do you stand here idle all day? They answered, Because no one is hired us. He said to them, You too go into my vineyard. When it was evening, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Some of the laborers, and give them their pay, beginning with the last and ending with the first. When those who had started at about five o'clock came, each received the usual daily wage. So when the first came, they thought that they would receive more, but each of them also got the usual wage. And on receiving it, they grumbled against the land and were saying, These last ones worked only one hour. And you made them equal to us, who bore the day's burden and the heat. He said to one of them in reply, My friend, I am not cheating you. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what is yours and go. What if I wish to give this last one the same as you? Or am I not free to do as I wish with my own money? Are you envious? because I am generous. Thus the last will be first, and the first will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Lord Jesus Jesus Christ. I think for our people that are interested in Buffalo history, with the Buffalo Historical Society, they have some beautiful pictures of the grain elevators and elevator alley map. When I first joined the parish, we did a Miss Buffalo excursion on and it shows the calling of people to work on those grain elevators. Thousands of people every day going to that, that, that first war area of the city of Buffalo to build up the city of Buffalo at the time. And they're, they're just beautiful pictures because it shows people gathering and being called. And every morning they'd show up to these docks And if their name was called, they would have the usual daily wage using the the coinage from the gospel. But if they didn't receive a calling, they'd go home empty, and they had to feed their family and take care of them. That's the way the city of Buffalo was built. Built one worker at a time, especially at the turn of the century. When we look at Matthew's gospel, it's not about building up the city of Buffalo. It's now building up the kingdom of God. And now that Jesus is moving toward Jerusalem, we're being called to build up that new kingdom. I think everybody wants to be treated fairly. I certainly do. And I'm not alone. I know you and I want to do it. So when we hear the gospel today about the last will be first and the first will be last, I think it's something that we can always struggle with. It can be hard to imagine that when we're called to work in the fields, and we're called to build in that harvest and bring in a new beginning. We would not expect it to go that way. But I think we need to also understand that the Lord and the author of all of creation, he's got a plan and a plan and a purpose for us and for everyone around us that is, that is well, well beyond us. It makes us almost wonder 
how we can repay the generosity that God gives us. Because we always make mistakes, and yet God calls us anyway. And he calls us to forgiveness, and he calls us around this altar table here, and he calls us to a greater version than ourselves. So as we hear the gospel today, it speaks of a landowner, which is significant. Because early on in the prophet Isaiah, verse 3, he had referred to the vineyard as the house of Israel, meaning that Israel or all of us, all of God's people, are considered that new harvest and that new beginning. So the people of Judah were considered the cherished plant of God, meaning God's incredible love for his people. And that's what we find in our gospel today in this parable, where we have to imagine a master landowner building a new kingdom. It's our whole vision here. So like a master story, Matthew goes about speaking of this landowner. When I would look at pictures in the historical society, it would show a formal calling people in the morning. This gospel doesn't do that. It shows the landowner. The landowner is shown over and over again. In fact, the vineyard, the name vineyard, is said five times in this particular gospel. Almost like the Lord has an obsessive concern for the vineyard, the cherished plant and people of God, because it represents everything in God's creation. But we also hear this landowner going back and forth all day long, calling people. He's calling people at 9 in the morning. He's calling again at noon. He's calling again at 3 in the afternoon. He's calling again at 5. No one else is doing it. There's no middle here. It's the Lord himself who is calling. Basically, five times total, which would represent to the Jewish people the various prayer times. When we would look at morning prayer at 9 in the morning. Or we would look at midday prayer at 12 in the morning. But I think we also have to look at it in relationship to Jesus. Where at 12 noon, Jesus begins the way of the cross. And the three hours of suffering, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, the next call, Jesus dies on the cross. At 5 o'clock, he's getting towards sunset or sundown. And now they're starting to begin the burial. And so all of us are called to work like Jesus in building up this church and all God work to do. When I think of our first reading, what stands out to me is the phrase, Seek the Lord. How all of us must seek out that master landowner and where we have a role to build up that kingdom, calling on us much more and what is depicted by the Buffalo Historical Society. In fact, our responsorial psalm will continue on the same, you know, the same tune by saying that the Lord is near to all who call upon him. We don't have to wait for a tragedy to strike or, or a circumstance to happen in our life to call upon God. He wants us to have an open avenue for him to come to us and hopefully to call us early right in life but we need to ask ourselves today, where is God calling you? Where is God calling me? I mean, we hear of that harvest being abundant and the laborers being few. And we also hear of, of the Lord working in this vineyard. We're just beginning the fall season. We're beginning the harvest season, not only in our actual world, but we also see it in our gospel as well. God is calling you and I to dig up our heels and also to roll up our sleeves and really be the better worker in the family, that more honest person in the workplace, the one who listens to their mom and dad at home, but also does her schoolwork with school and, and works on relationships because we're all called to be his hand and feet in the world, to a deeper relationship, a loving relationship, knowing that God is calling each one of us. We're here for a reason, and that reason is to build up that kingdom of God. And it's all because of the Lord. He invites each one of us to do His work. And the last thing that we want to do is be lazy to it, to be ignorant to it, to use the words of the gospel, to be envious of another. Envious, what it does, according to St. Thomas Aquinas, is it makes us 
almost hurts something that's designed to be good. Instead, we're possessed about what others have, rather than in fact what the blessings we have. In fact, the, the way of getting rid of that, that terrible vice of envy is to focus on gratitude. Gratitude for the many gifts that we have. Because when we become grateful, we want to roll up our sleeves. We want to be that person that God calls us to be. I think one of the best ways to know the way God teaches us how to live our life is to look at the fruits of the Spirit. If we do something that is named in Galatians 5, which gives them that being love or joy or peace or patience or kindness or generosity or faithfulness, when we start working in our family and we experience love, we know it's a fruit of the Spirit and the harvest is there. When we experience joy or peace or patience or kindness or generosity or faithfulness, we know that the fruit of the Spirit is there. It's when we see envy, for example, we start to learn that, you know what, that's not of God, and it's not how we're called to live. I think we all know that the more that we give, the more that we work, the harder we work for in our prayer life and our faithfulness, God will reward us all the more. And I think we also know that our relationships, our family, our parish here at St. John's, will be all the more successful as well. St. Augustine, to the parable of the vineyard is so appropriate at this time of the year when we enter into that harvest. But the real spiritual one is in which God rejoices for a person who enters into the field and works hard and bears fruit. I think God is calling each of us today to a deeper spiritual love, a way in which we can build up our family, build up our community, and work extra hard and that's a good day's work. That's an honest day's work. And yet when we look at the work ethic of people being called in our gospel today, once the landowner calls, they join right in. We actually find the foreman later on in the gospel when the pay has to be made. When it comes to the call, it's God himself. I think we all need to right now in a really busy world, give a little time for God to speak to us. And we are always calling us to be generous with our time, talent, and treasure, where he's calling us to build up our church. And I think our goal is to have at the end of our life, well done, my good and faithful servant. I now invite you to join in our Apostles' Creed as we renew our baptismal promises. And also ask the Lord to call us to the dead vineyard. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father. From there you come and judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last Amen. Let us turn to God who is generous in mercy and forgiveness, presenting the needs of the world before him. For all who saw and found the Lord, his holy church, and for all the faithful, for you and I, and for those who are in the process of finding their way, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For political and national leaders, and for all who assist them in exercising their authority, may God open our hearts to his guidance, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are unemployed or underemployed, for those who seek to help them, for those that suffer through the, the ravages of the coronavirus with regard to employment, may the Lord provide for them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who cannot be physically present with us today in this sacred assembly, all those that participate at home and also everyone on our parish sick list, may the Lord's peace come upon them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, 
here I pray for those who died that they would remember in a special way. Norma, Donna, and Nick, Bill Carver, Anna Sacha, David Laser, William J. Fay, and Reverend Monsignor Kevin O'Neill. May they and all the faithful departed experience eternal joy in the heavenly kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those prayers that we voice down in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of abundance and generosity, we ask that you hear our prayers and grant them according to your holy will. And we ask this all through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty God. May, may the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all, for this holy church. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the change of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder, to rule in your name over all you have made, and forever praise you in your mighty works, through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. Holy, holy.
In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
from our parish of St. John the 23rd, we offer you God's peace. On this day, we told his faith at Amundi, his ever and all of his. On this day, we told his faith at Amundi, his ever and all of his. On this day, we told his faith at Amundi, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you shed from my womb, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Yeah.